So today we're going to see what would happen if the Roman Empire was still around in the 1066 bookmark. Now, as you can see, we've made Imperator, Romulus, Augustulus, the glorious of the Roman Empire. And you know what? He's a pretty good character to get things started. And you may also notice that the borders ain't 100%. Now, I didn't give them like the full borders because I want to keep like the Seljuks and the Holy Roman Empire and stuff like that a bit more powerful. So there may be some challenges. For the emperor now for his actual vassals a lot of them are hellenic and roman but to try and keep it interesting a lot of their vassals are catholic not all of them so there is a chance that france and england get overthrown eventually and become catholic which would cause a lot of problems for the emperor now we still have people about like william the bastard of normandy who is still catholic and it's a lot more powerful than the king of france so we could potentially overthrow them but like how we've done these videos in the past we are just going to five speed it and see how things go now now, for this, we're going to actually observe as the Imperator himself, so we can see all his events, we can see his army and stuff like that. We're just going to follow them through. Now, I did miss some uploads, and I may not have as many uploads as I wanted this week. I just had to build a new PC and that, so all my settings are all over the place, so it may just take me a little bit of time to catch up to where I was. Now, we're going to see he's going to grant out a lot of his titles and stuff like that. His army is going to skyrocket. He's up to, what, 18,500 already, making him, of course, insanely powerful. But the Seljuks have 32,000 men with, of course, their 17,000 special soldiers. Now, I'm interested to see, as he does have claims inside the Roman Empire, if they're going to push them and fight the Romans. And we are, of course, going to have to keep a close eye on England and France. So it looks like Powys is actually losing a tyranny war, and it will actually flip to his Catholic son. So... Yeah, Wales is going back Catholic, it looks like. You and Pope Alexander are now rivals. So yeah, he's literally rivals with the Pope. And the Pope is actually his vassal. And I just noticed there's a crusade for Dalmatia, which is this kingdom right here. So the Pope, the Roman's vassal, has just called a crusade against his liege. Interesting. Now, it looks like it's going to be slightly in the Catholics' favour. Yeah, they've got 50,000 and the Romans have 36,000 about. So it looks like some of Scotland, all of Sweden, some of Denmark, some vassals in HRE and Hungary have all joined in. Now, it's interesting that like the actual Holy Roman Empire didn't join as like a whole, but we'll have to see. This is going to be interesting. Are they going to be able to stop this? Well, I think they should be okay to stop it because their forces are going to be a lot more like unified, raising in the same places where the actual attacking forces are coming from everywhere. So they're going to come in like small stacks. You know how the AI is? This is like the first major battle of the papacy's troops. Are they going to get caught out? Yes. And they're getting destroyed. And I honestly think that's going to set the tone for this crusade. Ooh, but this could make it interesting. So, a Catalan Catholic uprising has just rose with 34,000 men. And this, this is big. I don't know if the Romans are going to be able to defend the crusade as well as this big uprising at the same time. Well, the, the crusade is almost done, to be fair. And it's at 80%, and I think they've got ticking war score now. Oh, that's interesting. So it looks like, which I think is the smarter play, looking at what would go independent here. The Romans have actually brought all their troops over here, and they seem to be focusing on the uprising rather than the crusade. So the crusade's probably going to flip into their favor very soon while they focus on this uprising. This this is a big battle right here. And the Romans won it. That's going to take them up to... They're up to 40%. But yeah, the Crusade is actually majorly going now to the Catholics. So it looks like they're going to win the Uprising and defeat the Crusade, which I think is the smart play if you had to focus on one. Yeah, he's won the Uprising just right then, but... There's no chance yet. Yeah, there we are. So that is how it went. So Croatia has been freed from the clasps of the Roman emperor. So it'll be interesting to see is if he goes back for any of Croatia or is he just going to leave it? Oh, he's named his son Julius Caesar. So the next emperor is going to be Julius Caesar of the Roman Empire. I mean, he's only 11. So don't think we're going to have to worry about that anytime soon. I mean, but you never know. Now, interestingly, France and England haven't been overthrown. Now, Normandy is an organized dualist faith 
How? Why has William the Bastard done that then? <laughs> That's um, an interesting decision. And interestingly, much of England that was actually left as Catholic has just converted. So it seems to me we're not going to see England change anytime soon. Aquitaine has now also gone to Hellenic. Wait, loads of them have. Navarro wasn't, but they have converted. So the Roman Emperor has done a great job enforcing his vassals to convert. Okay, so it looks like there's a Persian claim on the Principality of Mesopotamia. Maybe butchering that, but it's this duchy right here. So the Seljuks have 32,000 men. Now, if the allies get involved, right now it's 32 v 33-ish. But if a lot of the... Oh... Interesting. It looks like they've lost a massive battle right here, which cost them thousands of men. And they're much more split up than the Romans. The Romans are doing it right. The death stack of 24,000 men right here, which could just wipe the floor with all their small stacks, which is exactly what they're doing. And they're coming in one by one, which is not the right tactic at all. And they're already up 34%. They're losing sieges. I mean, he's got some allies involved, but it's only another 3,000 men. Don't see that being too useful. Yep, they managed to win that. No problem. <laughs> God, yeah, the world seems to hate the Roman Empire being here in 1066. There's now a jihad for the Sultanate of Egypt. Yes. So for defenders, there's a lot more defenders this time. There's 13 allies. Some of them are like this guy who has some land in Egypt who is defending it as well. But there's 25,000 attackers. So I imagine they're going to be able to defend this no problem. It's already started. I didn't even see it build up. So... It looks like the attackers are here first, which is interesting. Now, don't know what the Romans are doing with their troops, taking them all out to sea. So this time, the defenders are the one moving in by sea, which is something you don't see often. It looks like they're going to lose the initial battle. Yeah, they definitely lost that. But once all the allies arrive and that and all their troops actually board the shores, I can't see the jihad being successful. Yeah, as you can see. So they should have no problem doing this. Now, they're up 28% and they are just coming back down now winning loads of battles so it looks like in what 26 years since the start of the game they've defended a crusade a big uprising and now a jihad as well so everybody is just doing their crusades against them so yeah kind of as expected they did actually manage to win that no problem whatsoever but they've defended some pretty big things so far and it looks like the culture's been reformed. It's been joined with Catalan. Now, I'm not sure why they chose that culture exactly, but there we go then. So he has reformed the culture. The papacy is actually losing a tyranny war. I've never seen the Pope defending a tyranny war before either, but they've gained a lot of land somehow. So the Pope may actually be a big problem for the Roman Empire eventually if they keep building their power anyway. And yeah, they are eventually going to win that tyranny war. It's not a surprise. But I'm still so shocked at just how well they got like all their vassals to convert to their faith. Oh, actually, as I was saying that, France is now Mandine and Dutch. So title history. So it was with this guy who was the Hellenic ruler. Then it was inherited to this guy who is Mandian and now it's been installed by faction demand by another Mandian. I don't how has this happened? The holy sites are all over here. I don't even know how it... Something to do with you. You did it first. And now you've somehow got the faith to take over France. Unexpected turn. But we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Because France has taken a lot of land. France is facing a war to put somebody else on the throne. And it looks like they're going to win. They have 13,000 men. And it's to put this prince on the throne. Who is Hellenic. So it may actually flip back. Oh, and she died in her sleep. So now the war is still going on, but Burgundy has split off. So yeah, things are just getting slightly cursed. But it looks like France is going to handle that claimant faction with ease. And now Brittany has split off and is Mandian. I don't know what is going on. Another ruler died. But they've won the faction. Now there's three different Mandian kingdoms. Okay, this may actually be the stupidest war I've ever seen. You see this just tiny duke? I respect it, but it's stupid. He started a war against the actual Roman Empire. And it's gonna go 30,000 men marching into your little land and just wiping it out completely. Yeah. Oh my god, is that another crusade? Yes. <laughs> 
So it's a crusade for Romagna, which is right over here. So the Pope is crusading his own land. Am I seeing that correctly? Yeah. So the Pope has started a crusade against his liege for his own land. Now, it's pretty even looking in terms of numbers. We have Hungary, Iceland, and then a bunch of vassals throughout Europe, as well as the Pope himself. And the Pope's got even more powerful. So yeah, the Pope is pretty big. Now, because the Pope is his land, he can actually raise his troops there first. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Now, the Roman Empire did raise 2,000 men here. Of course, they're getting absolutely destroyed. Uh, they're all coming in by sea now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's because, like, the Roman Emperor has so many troops himself. He brings them all in one stack, mostly, and they can just kind of wipe you out. Plus, he does actually have a lot of allies, 20. The Catholics do have 58. They do have more men, but they, they're gonna lose. Okay, there's so many troops. It's 33%, but look how many troops they actually have here now. They've actually managed to bring a massive army here, so I'm very interested to see how this goes if they do end up fighting. It looks like they're all just running away and starving then. Interesting game plan. Okay, some battles are starting, and some of them are actually going in the Catholics' favor, it looks like. Whoever gets the best out of this, I think we'll win the crusade because this is basically massive chunks of all their troops. And the Catholics even have a lot more men up here. It's now minus 13%. So yeah, the Catholics actually got the better of the battles with spare troops still. Now, if they can just siege, doesn't look like they're sieging really. Oh, they are starting to actually siege the Pope's own land. This is really strange. Ooh. So they're down 47% and ooh, France and some in the northern point of Africa has just started an in independence war. And they have 17,000 men and the Roman Emperor is down to just 9,000. Could we be seeing the downfall? Wait, what happened? I was so busy watching the crusade that somehow the Pope is now independent. It looks like some sort of faction started and I didn't see, which gave the Pope the independent. And it looks like they're going to win the crusade. And it looks like France is probably going to get their independence. Yeah, they, there's no way they're winning this crusade now. They do not have the troops for it. So the crusade was lost. And now the papacy is massive and incredibly powerful. They're losing a holy war for one county. And they're getting battered in this independence faction. He's raising his men right here. He only has 6,000 to raise which they're probably going to get caught out really quick and just get destroyed. They are down set. They're running away. <laughs> they just ran away. So France is now also independent. There we go. And Burgundy and a few others. But his troop count is now back up. So maybe he will be able to rebuild and push some of his claims before he dies. But he now has the nickname Strongarm. I don't think so. You have single-handedly watched the downfall of your empire. I don't think you deserve the name. Oh no, and Julius Caesar actually died under mysterious circumstances. And his other son was executed by Duke Blethyn. So he's a Welshman executed the emperor's son. Now that's brave. Loads of his sons are dead, actually. So we have Caesar Sicilius now, who's probably going to be the next emperor. Ooh, actually, and just like that, the emperor did die. He drank himself to death. So now it's Julius Caesar. I got that wrong. So it was actually Julius Caesar's son, who is also called Julius Caesar, who is now the Roman emperor. Emperor. He is defending a tyranny war, but that's tiny. I'm really interested to see if he does take back a lot of his lost land. And this guy's more stewardship focused, so he just doesn't have the military the other guy had. And I don't know if that's going to go well for him, to be honest. All it takes is a big faction to raise up and he's done for. Oh, and the Holy Roman Empire has actually taken some land just under Hungary. So I, I would love to see the Roman Empire fight to the Holy Roman Empire. I don't know if we're going to get it, but now their borders are touching, I'd love for that to happen. And it seems like some of the vassals in the empire are actually taking back some of the lost land on their own. So maybe all of this will be retaken over time just from these vassals going out and taking them. And of course, it looks like there's another crusade this time for Burgundy. So, and the Crusades come in with about 20 odd thousand more men. I don't see this going good, but I could be wrong, but that's a big chunk of land to lose. A lot of troops already so close to the war target as well. It's not like in typical Crusades where they all have to go by sea. So yeah, this really could go either way. Oh, and the Emperor actually just died. Now we're Julius Caesar the second. So yeah, this could go even worse. <laughs> a lot of the Romans troops though, are already here, so it may not be so easy for the Crusaders. And the first big battle, yeah, massive, maybe not. 
Yeah, it looks like... Yeah, they just kept pouring troops into that and kept losing them. So the Catholics have lost a big battle right there already. Now, there's a massive battle going on here, which is currently in the Catholics' favor, but it's got so many troops... It could be a pretty big deciding battle. And it looks like the Catholics are going to take it now. Yeah. But the Romans are up 39%. Yeah, the Roman defenders have actually lost so many troops. They're down to 56,000. While the Catholics have lost more, they still have a lot more troops on the field. And they're all basically here now as well. And just like that, a massive liberty war has risen up. So that is just for crown authority. So it's not that important. He's not going to lose any vassals or any land, but still a major battle he may have to fight. And just look at the Crusading War target. It's just stacked of Catholics and the Romans are all down south not really doing a whole lot okay so the romans are now marching up north to get some battles done this is the only way they're going to take this war back as if they manage to kill enough of them which they are doing because the catholics are pretty split up but i mean they're down 55 percent and there's a dissolution war with 23,000 men and this should definitely now be the romans main goal to stop because if they lose this the title of the roman empire is destroyed so this would just be the end of everything everything if they don't get that dissolution faction under control. That's all it really takes is a big crusade to massively lower the Romans' actual manpower. Then these factions can actually push the ultimatum easier. They don't have to get so many troops. Now, the crusade itself is kind of stagnating. All the troops are kind of just standing around. It's staying around the minus 60%. But the dissolution faction is actually up 26%, which I think should be their main priority. But just doesn't seem to be. Like, most of the Roman troops are still defending the crusade, which I really wouldn't do if I was you. <laughs> and basically, all of the Roman troops just got destroyed there. They're losing everything. And another war, which is an independence war. Honestly, if I was you, I'd just give up the... Cru yeah, he's given up the crusade, which was definitely the right move, but he has a liberty war, which I don't think is very important. The very important dissolution war and another independence war. So there's three different types of wars going on and the most essential one is probably at any moment going to enforce their demands unless he gets lucky and gets a white piece. But he's down 70% and he's trying to unsiege this island down here while the faction members are just sieging everything. 90%. It was 100 for a second there. Now it's gone back down to 99. 100%. Yeah, well, there's just been too many wars for me to keep track of because of course i didn't see england go independent or aquitaine i don't think or a lot of this land in iberia so i think there's just been so many factions that have been pushed that the ai just refused to fight them so he got left with the african kingdom title but yeah the roman empire as we knew it has completely fallen and it took just 87 years it is 1158 and the old emperor died in his sleep <laughs> That's not great, is it? Uh, that did not go to plan. So there we have it then. That is what would happen if the Roman Empire was still reigning in 1066. Kind of sad we didn't see him go back and forth with the HRE, but I mean, he got about, what, three crusades of jihad against them. Things were pretty tough for them, to say the least. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to leave that there. And like I said, at some point, I think gameplays will return back to normal. Hopefully by the end of this week, start of next week, just getting things back in place. But yeah, thank you all so so much for watching hopefully you did enjoy and end the video with a massive thank you to all the channel members we have intermio one victor voss anderson and toxic flame but yeah thank you all so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one